Welcome to another episode of Get Paid for Your Pad. And today I have a real superstar on the show. She's been on the show before in October 2019 when we met in person in Los Angeles. The one and only Miss Julie George, the offer of $1 million host. Julie, welcome back to the show. Hi, thank you for having me again. I feel very privileged that I uh, get a return <laughs> invite to get paid yeah. to your pad. Absolutely. It's, You're now um, part of a very, uh, a very select few people who have made uh, more than one appearance on the, on the podcast. So, <laughs> Will it be uh, three? Can I aim for a three uh, you know, trifecta? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be free, if not more. Because, um, you know, we were talking a little bit before we started recording and, you know, with, with your experience um, with your business and how you, how you uh, scaled it up to 130 units in Australia and, and you sold your business. I think there's so many topics that we could talk about uh, that people can learn from. So, um, so yeah, I'm excited to, excited to have you back. And uh, one of the reasons I wanted to invite you because, uh, you know, I'm wearing my short-term rental legend shirt, especially for you as you have uh, actually joined our legends community recently, which is, which is really, really awesome. Very exciting. I am the latest legends, the short-term rental legends, and it is um, a club that I've been aiming to join for, I guess, 18 months now since I first heard about uh, short-term rental legends. Um, you, you've set the bar pretty high, though. The legends, you know, you had to have 30 properties, $2 million income, uh, and, you know, I'm pretty excited to say I made it. So I'm in, I'm in the club. It's very cool. Yeah, we're no, we're super excited to to have you on board, and uh, always good to have uh, somebody from uh, a different corner of the world uh, to add the to add to the Aussie team uh, within our within the legends. Um, but um, but yeah, for the listeners who haven't listened to your podcast back in October two thousand nineteen, episode three hundred, could you give us a quick introduction of yourself and, and your story? Absolutely. Uh, so I'm based in Australia, as Jasper was saying, uh, on the Great Barrier Reef, Cairns, Queensland. And in 2016, I created a, uh, an Airbnb property management company uh, called Host My Home. Now, that started from a one-bedroom apartment that I listed on Airbnb simply because the tenant had moved out. I heard about this amazing phenomenon. I thought, what is all the fuss about? and popped it on Airbnb, went from $240 a week to $600 a week income, and my light bulb went off. Uh, so therefore created a business opportunity for other property investors to make the same sorts of returns. In the three years that I had the business, I went from zero to 130 properties, um, over $8 million income purely on Airbnb, uh, and uh, and then was able to sell the business. So I've had a pretty wild ride and very fortunate to, to I guess, offload the business six months before COVID. Uh, so that was very good timing. But now I'm working as a consultant and, and, and promoting the book. Uh, the book does very well. Uh, and um, yeah, and get to do lots of exciting interviews like this one. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, so back in back in October 2019, you had uh, you had just sold your business. Um, and you know, if you want to learn more about the, that particular story, go back and listen to that episode number 300. But in this podcast, what I really wanted to focus on is, you know, how do you work on your business versus in your business? Now we see this is a topic that uh, a lot of a lot of us struggle with. Um, because it's so it's so tempting and natural, I guess, to wanting to do everything yourself because you feel like you know you, you're, you're kind of hesitant to pass on the task to other people because you're not sure if they know exactly what to do. Um, you want to do everything perfectly, and I think this this sounds very um, you know very familiar to a lot of people that are listening right now. Uh, but what we see in the not just the legends community, but also you know within our short term rental profit academy and just across the board is that people who focus on taking themselves out of the equation from the start. So even when you have one listing is thinking about like, okay, how can I, how can I reduce the amount of time I have to put into it? And it really forces you to figure out what's the best way to do things. And then, you know, who can I either outsource it to or 
how, or how can I automate it? Right. And, you know, doing that really frees up time for yourself to either work on the business and scale it if you want to, but also it just makes it much more enjoyable. Uh, even if you're running one listing um, and I, you know, I speak from, from experience when I say that, because, you know, I started with one listing and I completely automated it because I had to, because I was traveling around the world. So I'd be sitting on the beach somewhere in the, in the South Pacific and, uh, you know, I might not have internet. Um, you know, I'd be, I might be sleeping when I get an Airbnb uh, uh, a request. So I, I, from the get go had to sort of, you know, figure out a way to, to automate, automate the business and make sure that it would run even if I was somewhere lost, you know, in the, in the, in the middle of the Pacific ocean. So um, that's, that's really, uh, that's really made it a, a really pleasant experience for me as well. Um, but you've taken that to a complete different level uh, mm-hmm. by, by at some point running 130 units and you were still traveling around and you had your processes in place. You had your, your virtual assistants, your employees, you had uh, a playbook where that made it easy for people to, you know, perform all the tasks that needed to be performed. So that's incredibly, incredibly impressive. And so we, we, that's what I want to talk about today. Um, focus on, you know, how can, how can people that are listening right now, regardless if, if they have one unit or five or 10, um, what's, what's the best way for them to get started and what's, you know, how, how do you do that? How do you work on the business versus in the business? I guess you've got to take it back to basics to start with and realize what are you going into business for? Are you going into business for yourself to replace your job? And are you creating a new job for yourself? Now, if that's the case, that's fine. I don't like to work all that much. I've got to be honest and say, I actually prefer to sit on the beach and not have to be answering those contacts. And um, and I guess I saw short-term rental as an opportunity for me to build a business that I could work on, not in. And I guess, um, and create a lifestyle for myself. It was all about creating freedom. Freedom is, I guess, the biggest uh, key to, well, is my biggest success um, factor. And being able to have that freedom, not being locked down to a job, not having a boss. Uh, So when I started my business, it wasn't about creating a job. I mean, essentially, in the beginning, it was to replace my income. That was my first goal in business. I wanted to replace my my day-to-day income so that I could resign from my position. And when that happened, that was so exciting. Uh, the second the second goal that I set for myself was, okay, how do I now work on the business, not in the business? Because as much as I love the business, I don't love cleaning. I don't love those midnight phone calls. I don't love, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I had to recognize. What were my strengths? What were my weaknesses? Um, and my one of my weaknesses is, for example, cleaning. Cleaning is not is not my forte and I remember getting to the stage Jasper one day I had made 17 beds in a row and it dawned on me when I fell into my armchair at night time after that 17 beds man I have got to get some help and that's where I needed to employ somebody who was better at that task than I was Uh, so it's all about recognizing your strengths your weaknesses what are you in business for to create a job for yourself or to create a business that will provide freedom and success and money for you to, uh, to live by. So, um, so I guess that's, that's probably the first thing. The first Um, thing that's the, that's the, the, the cleaning and, and maybe it would be a good idea to, to just let's, uh, let's categorize the the different tasks mm -hmm. that we as hosts have to perform. Because if you start an Airbnb listing, even if you have one, there's suddenly you become the manager, you become the marketing person, uh, you become the the hospitality person. You kind of have to do all these different things. Right. So, um, so you mentioned cleaning, right? So, you know, you obviously you can you can hire somebody to do the cleaning, but it's not just it's not just finding a person to clean, right? There's there's more to it for that person to actually so, know exactly how to clean and what how yes. to because it's not really cleaning. It's more like how do you turn over a unit to receive yeah. a, speci- a specific group of guests, right? So what 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 other processes are involved there? Well, I guess it's all about um, and trust as well, like being able to trust that somebody else is going to do the job as well or if not better than what you can do it. Now, that 
um, is probably one of the biggest things that I see with entrepreneurs struggling with is to be able to relinquish that control, trusting others, empowering your staff or your contractors to do the job for you and to step back. I mean, to the point where, well, you know, like what, what I wanted to create was a job, was a business that pretty much ran itself. And in the end, that last year I was in business, the third year in business, I can say, I can quite happily say that I didn't need to be there. I didn't need to run my business because I had some really capable staff that were able to do it for me. The one thing I didn't give up was the financial control. I really still wanted to make sure that the money was going to the owners, the, the staff were being paid, that type of thing. But apart from that, I wasn't needed. And in fact, they used to kind of laugh at me when I walked into the office saying, well, what are you going to do here? And I, you know, so it was, it was pretty cool that uh, I'd created this, this monster that um, had legs and was growing on its own. Now, I guess if you want me to, I'll, I'll take you back to uh, where this all started. I guess after I accumulated, say, 10 properties, so it was about 10 properties that I got to, and that's when I had that meltdown of the 17 beds going, oh, I need some help. Um, I employed um, a gentleman by the name of Glenn. Now, Glenn was 72 years old. Glenn had come to the end of his advertising career, but he was capable. He was... Uh, a self-motivated individual who wanted to run his own business. He just needed an opportunity. Well, I had the opportunity. So when we partnered up, Glenn and I, I got him to come on board. Now, the way that I worked it was I contracted Glenn in this position. The position of property host is what I called it. He was responsible for 10 properties. I asked him to take over the guest messaging. So uh, so he co-hosted, we set him up a profile. He co-hosted onto my Airbnb profile. He did all the guest messaging. He did all the meet and greets. Now he did it in person. That was one of our points of difference that we met and met all of our guests in person, which was a real reassurance to our homeowners. And I guess that's where we also succeeded in getting more properties. People knew that we were eyeballing these people. We could tell if somebody was walking in with a keg of beer and a boom box, we knew what was going to happen, so we'd quickly send those people off uh, and out of that property. Uh, so Glenn was doing that. He was then doing the cleaning. He was doing the restocking. And he was doing all the day-to-day -day operations um, of, that, of those properties, which allowed me to then go out and find more properties and get more, um, build that business you know, to a greater level. The beauty of it is we did a profit share on any of the money coming through. So I was charging out at 25%. I was paying him 6% plus the cleaning fee that we kept from the guest. So in any one week, my, my new uh, contractor, Glenn, he could have been earning up to $2,000 a week with the income coming in. So it's extremely good money. He had full control of his little business and he was able to take on more properties or take on less properties, depending on how he felt, if he needed a break. Um, so, so I guess, and I know I'm going on and on because I get really excited about this, Jasper, that I, you know, I, it, this opportunity not only changed my life, but it changed some other people's lives that Glenn, had, who had come to the end of his corporate career, was able to suddenly build his own short-term rental business and be able to um, bring in some amazing money, enjoy himself, have full control. As long as he was doing well, which I could tell by the reviews, happy days. We were in a really good spot. So it was a great partnership and it was all about uh, empowering others. Right. Yeah. What I, what I love about this is instead of hiring somebody, you kind of partnered with somebody, right? You created mini partnerships almost, or really real partnerships um, with, uh, with different people as a way to, to skill your business. Right. And I think that's a great idea because when people are invested, when there's an incentive, um, then, you know, not only, not only is, is that an incentive for them to, to do a good job, but also I think what's really important is that they feel it's a different feeling 
You know, when you work for somebody and you're just getting paid by the hour or you're partnering with somebody, uh, it, makes, it makes you feel differently, right? Is that you get a sense of responsibility, a sense of ownership. And I think that's, that's really important uh, for, for the performance, but also for the enjoyment, right? It's much more fun feeling like, hey, I've got my own little business here versus like, oh, I've got a boss who just tells me what to do. Exactly right. He, he, I guess Glenn took such pride in his work. He even went the extra mile. He would actually go and pick people up at the airport. He would take them down to the local uh, liquor store. Uh, he'd flirt with all the girls. Uh, it was it was a kind of it was just a great feeling. And he would he got a real buzz out of it. I mean, he was working in advertising for many many years. Suddenly, he's running his instant hotels. And he, yeah, but he was able to have that freedom and to be able to, you know, really take pride in his work. So um, I imagine in order to take on a partner um, like Len, uh, you need to train that person. You need to have documentation in place um, to show that person like, hey, this is, this is how we run this business. This, here's a cleaning checklist or here's how you create the Airbnb listing or how, can you tell us a little bit more about, yeah. you know, that sort of like the playbook that you, that you had? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we actually, um, we, this was very important to me from the day, the day I started. So it was all about documenting our processes not only having checklists, but also having a manual, a training manual, and being able to take um, somebody like Glenn, even though he was very capable and he, he in fact was a better cleaner than I was, I still wanted to let him know my minimum standards. So we would, we would go through and we would talk about, okay, how is a bed to be made? Are we going to use two sheets plus the the blanket on top or how are we going to like we wanted to have a standardized approach across the company so anybody who was coming into julie's properties was going to receive the same set of standards and that's also very important to make sure that you um you can sort of monitor how well they're working and and you know and because they are representing you essentially in this uh, this role so so what i would do is i would actually uh I mean, Glenn was a bit of a different example because he was my very first person on. But my anybody that I contracted with and went into business with after that, I would actually get them to go out with Glenn for a couple, well, for a week actually, to shadow him on the job just to see what a property host does um, day to day. The realities of the the role because it's not for everybody. I mean, this you know it may seem appealing what we do, but it's bloody hard work. It's twenty four seven. Um, I, you know, I, my heart goes out to the people out there that uh, are not getting a break because that was one of the big issues that I found was uh, property hosts that uh, didn't want to switch off and literally switch off. You know, you need to sleep. Um, but unless you've got some ideas in place there, that's very hard. So, so I guess teaming, teaming up a new person with an existing property host, seeing what they're doing running them through an induction. So I would actually have them for a day in the office and I would show them exactly how my business worked, what the, what the idea of the business was, how it's viewed from a guest point of view coming in, um, my goals, my ambitions, the reason that I started. Uh, and I really want, I mean, 100% transparency with your team members is key. You really need to be on the same page. Don't keep any secrets from them. Um, that with training and then regular meetings. We would actually, because it is such a lonely role, we would have weekly or fortnightly meetings where we would all get together. We'd all talk about our issues or our wins or the successes that we've had, the nice guests that we've had, the reviews that we've got in. Um, and it was a real team sort of atmosphere. So so ongoing then training uh, to talk about, okay, well, maybe Airbnb have introduced, you know, there might be something different with their software at the moment. So we would talk about that and how to, how to go about making claims and getting a claim in within 24 hours or before the next guest comes in. You know, little things like that that are, are really important, but it's not just important to me, it's important for the whole team. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think... Um 
I think the best time to really start with creating a process and documenting it. Um, and, you know, Google, Google docs, by the way, is a, is a, is a great tool uh, to document everything that you're doing in your business. Um, and, and because it forces you to really um, evaluate the way that you're doing things. Right. So just, just to give a, an example, right. So, um, you know, I, when I started my blog and I started writing blog posts, that really forced me to think about how am I doing things and is this the best way to do it, right? So, for example, I remember writing a blog post on, on photos, right? I wanted to, I wanted to write a, a, a really good post on like, hey, what's the best way to, you know, uh, take the photos, categorize them, and, 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 that ha and that forced me to think like, well, why am I putting the picture first? Why did I put this picture first? And what should be the second picture or the third picture? And what should the caption be like? Right. Those are things that I previously hadn't really thought about. I just kind of put the photos, you know, I just upload them. I wrote some captions and that's it. But once you have to, once you're documenting it, especially when you're, when you're, um, uh, planning to show it to somebody else. So let's say you have a virtual assistant or you're, you know, you have somebody who's going to help you with, uh, with your listing, just, just having, creating that process to show that to that person really forces you to think, okay, you know, is this the best way to do it? So I, I want to encourage like everybody who's listening right now, you know, start documenting how you run your, your, even if you have one listing, start documenting how you do that, right? How do you send messages? How do you respond? How do you write a review? How do you respond to a review? How do you create a listing? How do you create your description? right? How do you put together your photo gallery, right? How do you manage your, your cleaners, right? What, how do they prepare your home um, to receive a particular group of guests? Like right? what, what if the guests uh, is, what if it's like a group, a family? What if it's like a couple, right? Do you do it differently? And, and, you know, little details that you mentioned is like, how do you make the bed? Right. Do you yeah. put two pillows or three pillows or how do you put yeah. them? Do you put a towel on the bed or do you, you know, wrap the towel into a swan? You know, it's, it's something yeah. that they do in Southeast Asia a lot. But it's, which I well, we we used cool. to have, we would have competitions in our team meetings as to who could make the best animal out of their town. So, uh, you know, <laughs> and it wasn't just animals that they were able to design. So, <laughs> right. So. Yeah. But, but I totally get what you're saying. And in fact, Jasper, um, and you're probably the same as me. I had written down so much in the processes, the policies, the procedures. I was able to easily write a book <laughs> with all of that documentation. So, in fact, a lot of the content for my book is straight from my my work policies, my work procedures. Uh, you know, like I've put in there the inventory on what should be in a property, right down to the iron and the ironing board. Well, I've got that list in the book and. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, folks, if I, yeah, I would implore you that take this as an advice that like Jasper was saying, if you are running a business, start documenting your processes, because if you're not there, if you, and let's just say, you know, you go on a holiday or you, um, unfortunately something happens to you and you're out of action for a little while, you need your staff and your team to be able to step up. Now it's no good if it's all in here. Uh, you've got to write it down. You've got to be able to put those processes down. The other thing that happens when you have a process in place and you've got a, a training manual is that if you get that knock on the door one day, someone wanting to buy your business, guess what? You're ready. You're ready to go because you've actually got a manual that you can hand over to the new owner and you're going to make life so much easier for yourself. So, so take that extra five minutes, write down, or get your team involved in writing down these these processes too, because you know the the who, the what, the why, the how of these processes. It's pretty simple to document, and you know just keep it updated on Google Drive or somewhere that can be easily accessed. Yeah, and today there with all the technology that we have, you know, with the Google Docs, um, Box, Dropbox, uh, there's there's all this technology. 
that helps us to really easily create and share um, documents, but also there's task managers like we use Asana, for example, um, which is which is really, really, it just saves so much time um, to just like, in, instead of having to create your own to-do list every day, it's it's right there. There's, there's, you know, there's tasks that show up every week or every day, depending on, you know, depending on what you're doing exactly. Um, but there's so many, there's so many tools out there now to, to really like streamline um, all of this. And, you know, there's so many benefits to doing, to doing that work, that initial work of, of creating that process and documenting what you're doing exactly and how you're doing things. Um, I, I've always had a little bit of resistance. Um, part of me was, part of me always thinks, okay, well, this is just going to cost me extra time to create it. Um, and I just want to get it done. So I just want to do it quickly. Um, but now like, you know, I stop myself and I say like, no, I'm, I'm putting in 10 minutes now, but that's mm -hmm. going to save me 30 minutes, you know, down the, down the line. It's, it's, it's like saving money, right? I'm, I'm saving a little bit of money now every, every week so that in the future, um, I, I can take advantage of that. Right. So it's like, it's an investment really, uh, in yourself, but, uh, and in your business, but also, like you said, it just has so many other benefits as well. Let's say you want to bring on an employee or you want to bring on a partner, or like you said, like maybe, maybe uh, you, you sell your business in the future at some point. Um, and one thing that I really love about your uh, mentality and something that you've been kind of hammering on in the, in the short term rental legends community is have an end in mind, right? Mm -hmm. Before you even start renting out your first little tiny little room, because I mean, every, most of the people in our communities, they, that's how they started. You know, they, they didn't start um, with a vision of like, Hey, I'm going to create like, you know, a hundred units and create this business and sell it. Like when you, when you did your first Airbnb listing, I'm sure that probably wasn't the, the vision in, in, initially. No, that's um, right. But, and yeah. So I, I, just, I just want to say, um, so I think, it's it's such a good point that you that you that you made was you know even, even when you're starting out it's good to think about it right it's good to think about like hey is this something that i want to do for the next five or ten years is this do i want to expand this um do i just want to keep it at one room one listing or whatever that may be um even though of course our circumstances changes uh, life changes you, you never know you can't predict the future but at least it's really good a really good habit to uh, to think about it, right? To have some some sort of game plan for for the future. Yeah, and you know, the, I mean, we've all been rocked by COVID this year, unfortunately. But but I still believe that the industry is super super strong, and probably more than ever in the future, we're going to find that travelers are going to be wanting to stay at short term rentals as opposed to a hotel room. So they've got their own kitchen, so they've got their own bathrooms that they can have control over. So in saying that, I just see that there's going to be more opportunities to grow these businesses, to sell these businesses, uh, you know, and so, yeah, look, you might only have one or two properties at the moment, but it still may mean that you're going to get a phone call one day or a tap on the shoulder and say, would you be interested in, in selling the management rights of those properties, uh, you know, and because there are big companies all around the world right now looking to take up as much stock as they possibly can. And, uh, you know, and I was actually, you know, in the early part of this year, I was actually helping one of those companies identify smaller short term rental operators and to acquire those businesses. So I can tell you for sure that there are a lot, especially the investor backed businesses. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are investor backed and they're looking to have as many properties as possible. Um, so just be prepared that and think about that exit plan, because, I, you know, I'm sure that. It, it may be fantastic at the moment, but you've got to really think about, do you want to be doing this forever? And like we were saying before, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty full on. It's 24 seven, the business. Um, I can tell you, I haven't regretted it since I have sold my business and I'm now helping other people grow their business. But uh, you know, it's um, yeah, it, it's a great opportunity. You're building a saleable asset while you're earning this cash flow positive business. So uh, so folks, get your processes, start working on your business, not in your business, and it's just going to pay off in the end. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, about Legends. So you, you, 
you've been following it from pretty much when we started it, um, mm -hmm. which is just a year ago in Puerto Rico. It was our first live event. Um, obviously, we can't do live events now, so we've taken it virtual. Um, we're doing, you know, we're doing meetings every every single week, um, which which has been so much fun just to jump on Zoom and have a group of uh, about thirty uh, entrepreneurs from all over the world uh, talk about different topics and stuff. But what, what's what's your experience been like? Look, I guess um, I was a bit hesitant, you know, I was excited to join the club, but I was a little bit hesitant because the meetings are at 1am my time in Australia. So I'm up at 1am, I'm trying to hold my eyes open, I'm trying to be articulate and answer questions if they're coming my way. Um, but it, do you know what, I've just been absolutely blown away with the inspiring stories that the members have in this business um, and in the club. I guess what I also was really um, surprised by, pleasantly surprised, was that these successful entrepreneurs, all earning over $2 million a year in this industry, are so humble and so willing to share their secrets and, and vulnerable. They're actually able to say, hey, guys, I need help with recruiting staff. Uh, does anybody have any ideas? You know, so they're, they're actually, there's some amazing down-to-earth conversations going on. And I guess at that level, when you're earning $2 million plus, people will look at you like, well, you must have all the answers. You must already know it all. I can tell you that that's not the case, but there's not a lot of mentorship out there. There's not, you know, the forums that are on Facebook are still, I, I look at them sometimes and I just shake my head thinking, there, you know, there's a lot of whinging, there's a lot of bitching, there's a lot of uh, negativity, or they're still talking about, you know, um, the best way to, uh, you know, should we be putting milk in the fridge, you know, stuff like that. We need to ask those higher end questions and to be able to be inspired to to keep growing our business, even in these crazy COVID times. Legends absolutely 100% has inspired me with the stories uh, the contacts that I'm making, the deals and the opportunities that are coming through. I mean, we're talking about buying hotels. You know, there's people talking about buying hotels together, going into partnerships together. Uh, and it's just a, it's a great community. And I, found, I feel like I found my people. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's really cool. Found your tribe. <laughs> yeah, my tribe. <laughs> I'm just going to get a shirt like yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll send, we're going to definitely send you one. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, I, I appreciate you, 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 you mentioned, uh, sort of the culture of, of sharing and that's something that, you know, when me and Eric started this, uh, started this SCR legends, we, we thought to ourselves, like, what's, what kind of culture do we want to, um, create? Cause mm -hmm. you know, that we've been reading a lot of entrepreneur books and stuff like that. And that's something that they always comes back is like when you when you start any type of business, you want to really think about you know what's the culture. Um, I mean, we were just reading this book by Seth Godin. Uh, this is marketing, which is an excellent book. He, he he just thinks on a different level when it when it comes to marketing, and what he really hammers down is, and and this applies to your Airbnb listing too, is you know, culture is uh, strategy so much. That no, sorry, I'm saying it wrong. Uh, culture is more important than strategy, so much that culture is strategy, and that really stuck with me because, because essentially, you know, you have marketing strategies, right, and tactics, right. It's like, oh, you know, you put this picture in your Airbnb listing, or you write this, uh, this line in your description, or you post this on social media. And you, you know, that's that's like sort of more the tactical part, uh, but then to think like. You know what's the what's the culture that I wanna that I wanna create? create. You know what are my values, right? And 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 I interviewed um, somebody who's a social uh, impact expert, and 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 she mentioned that eighty six percent of people uh, buy from businesses that they feel like have their same values. They share values, right? So I Later. think that's something just on a different level to think about is even in, for your Airbnb listing, like what, what are the values that you're trying to communicate? Um, what's the culture that, that you align yourself with? And when you make that very, uh, very clear, then what happens is that people are going to read that and people are going to feel that. And you're going to think, Hey, that's, that's for me. You know what I'm saying? Just like you were, just like you mentioned, it's like you looked at legends and you're like, Hey, that's, that's, that's where I belong. 
right? Those are, those are people like me, right? And, and that's, I think that's an extremely uh, strong marketing tactic or not marketing tactic. It's, a yeah. extreme, it's, it's just extremely powerful when you're able to really define um, the culture and then, you know, you will just attract the, the people that, um, that align with that. Whether, whether that's, that's for any business, right? Whether that's your, your Airbnb listing or your, uh, your short-term rental business or any, any other business that you have. So that's something that we, we really thought about for a long time is like, what do we want to represent? And the biggest thing was what you mentioned is like, you know, let's, let's just be, let's be humble and let's not pretend that we know everything and let's create an environment where people can share openly, where there's no judgment, where we are there to support each other, help each other grow. And where we're not trying to raise our own boats, but we're trying to raise the tide that lifts all the boats. Right. So that's extremely important to us. And uh, I'm really happy that you, you know, that, that that's something that you mentioned. Yeah. I, um, I always live by the saying that there's no point in being the smartest person in the room. If you can't learn from others, what are you doing there? And, uh, you know, so, and the other, the other thing that I really like is to enhance yourself, uh, sorry, surround people that are going to enhance your life. And that's in, in private and in business. But, um, but I can certainly, uh, you recommend that if anybody is tuning into this podcast that, may meet those requirements the 30 plus properties two million dollars a year income if you're looking for some mateship if you're looking for some um some you know if you're willing to share if you're looking for a community of like-minded people please come and apply because um the more the merrier and one day we will have live events again because I'm determined to, you know, have another beer with you, Jasper. Uh, but, um, but, you know, Legends has been fantastic. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm, totally, um, I'm totally pumped. Well, this week I'm, I'm uh, yeah, totally pumped to get up again at 1 a.m. in the morning to talk to the group. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, we really appreciate you uh, just getting up in the middle of the night uh, or staying up late. To be in these calls, that's uh, that's incredible uh, dedication. Um, awesome, Julie. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your your knowledge again on this podcast. I'm sure we're going to have you back at some point. Um, and for the people that are listening, like you can also watch these podcasts on YouTube, right? So you go to the Get Paid for Your Pet YouTube channel, and so you can actually see you can see Julie, you can see me uh, chatting to each other. And, um, and Julie, before I, I let you go, you want to let people know how they can find your book, uh, The Million Dollar Host? Yeah, sure. So uh, Million Dollar Host is available on Amazon, any of the leading bookstores. You'll find it uh, always positioned above Get Paid for Your Pad. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to check Jasper that. Jasper <laughs> and I have some, um, some friendly competition going, but I've got to admit that he actually does have more reviews than I do. So he's probably making more money than I am, but, uh, but jump on Amazon, jump on any of your leading bookstores uh, or milliondollarhost.com.au. And I would love for you to, to purchase the book uh, and let me know what you think. And, and please get in touch. Um, if anyone's out there that wants to get in touch with me, uh, jump on Facebook, look me up on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, um, Instagram. I still haven't figured out how to work Instagram. So, but I'm there and uh, I would love to connect with you. Sweet. That's awesome. Thank you, Julie. And to the listeners, thank you for listening or watching. And of course, uh, next week there'll be another episode. So I'll see you then.